I never gave these stories. As of this moment, we are at war. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You miss her? Storytellers for the last 50 years have been shaping the way we imagine the next frontier to look like. How we're going to live there, what we're going to eat, all of the incredible things that really have only lived in our imagination. And now, we're actually years away from sending a civilian tourist into space to see what it's really like. I kind of want to be there too, but before I Airbnb my lunar penthouse, I start thinking about all of my travel requirements. You know, the list you put together before you go somewhere new, like, what am I going to wear? What's the weather going to be like? What religious and cultural practices do I have to be conscious of before I go? And then all of a sudden I think, what language am I going to speak? And do we have these answers yet? Human beings usually have governments and borders to tell us how we're going to act when we travel. So if we're sending people to space, who dictates how human beings are going to act when we get there? Do we know? No. We don't know right now. I There's don't know. I haven't actually thought about this uh, before. I think it's human to dictate and it's together what we dictate. It cannot be done, just done by one country. We need collaboration of many different countries. Space governance and the study of universalization is a relatively new topic, but is intensely debated. There are four major players on Earth that are starting to really impact what's happening in space. And we have to start talking about it. So I took some time and took all my questions and started being overwhelmed with all the things we need to think about. And then I started thinking about how maybe we feel like someone else is going to fix it for us. So I'm going to distill all of this down to one very simple question. How am I going to buy chocolate in space? Now that might seem like a really stupid question to ask, but let me explain. Chocolate is a $92 billion industry on Earth. It's a commodity that crosses borders, it has tariffs and rules and taxes applied to it that are different in every single country it lands in. So when I'm in space and I don't know, let's say I'm on Mars and the store that's there only sells moon cakes. Not only are they missing the like one opportunity to sell Mars bars on Mars, but they're also going to limit me from getting access to something that I love. So knowing what government's in place will tell me what I can and can't buy when I get there. So to stave off my impending anxiety attack about what else I'm not going to be able to buy in space, I've asked a series of experts and students at the International Space Development Conference what they think is going to happen when we get out there and what the future of space governance really looks like. Are you guys excited about the future of space? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Do you guys all want to live in space? Yeah. yeah. Sure. It's my dream, actually. I wouldn't say no to an opportunity like that. Do you want to live there? No. Yeah. In history, human beings tend to start with conflict yeah, before yeah. we cooperate. Yeah. So how do we go to space and cooperate with one another first? We need to first accept how we are and how they are. The different religions, yeah. ethnicities. Uh, like we need to come to an understanding. All four countries have different rules about theft and about you know, what happens when someone steals something. Yeah. So how will we deal with that on a space colony? Maybe we could pick out the best rules from all the countries and make one rule. Okay, yeah. I like that. We have three types of robots that are going to uh, provide security to our space colony. It's going to be autonomous robots, humanoid robots, and dog robots. It's going to uh, secure the whole place. So we have some really imaginative and exciting approaches to what we'll do when we do get out there. But nothing is concretely papered today. So that gets me thinking, like, am I overthinking it? Do we really need to make a plan on Earth before we go to space, or can we just figure it out when we get there? There should be a backup plan, and there should be a plan f when you go to space. Surely, yes. Yeah? Yes. Now, we, we, we are, there is no need to create a government in the space, because the business is small. After people start staying there like for a while, then we can look into it. So, it seems we're like a bit divided on what the future should be of the conversation, but based on a bit more research, we're gonna be going to the moon in 2036 to start mining minerals. We've already heard announcements of a space force. We have shot satellites out of the sky. These are all things that are affecting us here on Earth. So my argument would be, maybe we should be talking about it right now and not leaving it until we get there. I mean, we're already going. 
We are already going to space. Let's even bring the conversation back to my chocolate comment. What if we start growing cacao on the moon? Who gets to own it? Is it the people that are pulling the resource from the moon or does it become all of ours? We don't really know yet, but I like to think that we'd be able to collectively collaborate for us to all be able to have access to it. It's all of our property. Yes, it should be all of us property because we all belong to the universe. We really should set a policy against like only one nation dominance over the space treasure. It's so easy to get caught up in the fears of ownership and how we're going to act. So for a second, let's think about the really exciting things like the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals think that we can actually start benefiting Earth from space. I can't think of anything more exciting because sometimes we think about going to space as the next frontier and like we're going to leave Earth and never come back when really we might be able to make our planet even better by living out in space and looking backwards. Even going back to my silly chocolate question, if we're in space and we can look back, maybe we can combat poverty. Chocolate is a commodity that is rife with poverty and oppression issues. And even down to fair trade, we still haven't been able to figure out how to ensure that the farmers that are growing the cacao plants are really being paid well enough. Do you think that maybe we could monitor it from space to ensure there is equality? I do. In fact, I think that's the panacea. Here's another thing to think about, our garbage. Humans have a pretty bad rap when it comes to our wrappers and where we're gonna put it when we're done with our food. So have we started thinking about what we're gonna do with garbage once we're in space? I recently heard a young 15-year-old named Fatima from the Afghan Girls Robotics team. Uh, her, she implored the audience that she was speaking in front of. She said, please don't make Mars another Earth. My prayer and hope for the future is that when we go out and begin to establish these habitats and other uh, places in our solar system and beyond is that we actually become a better human. We build into it. We have a plan. And it's not a short-term plan. It's this vision that we're this world within the universe. We're part of this magical ecosystem that we now have to look at with a sustainability lens. Um, the way I did it in my project was that we tried to reuse as much as possible and we tried to basically eliminate all the plastic and recycle everything. So excitingly enough, there are people far smarter than me talking about innovations behind sustainability and how maybe we don't do to the space what we've done to our oceans. So even though we don't have anything on paper yet that really dictates how we're going to act when we get there, I'm excited to say that there are a lot of people talking about it and engaging about it and most importantly, getting the next generation to start really thinking about what their life is going to look like when they get there. It's not just scientists and theorists and heads of states and students that have to be talking about this. It's all of us. Because even down to basic questions, regardless of whether you want to stay on Earth or live with me on the moon, we have to all come together and have these conversations. Dr. Edmonds and the National Space Society and Space Edge, along with the International Space Development Conference, are really pushing to ensure that we have these conversations now instead of when it's too late. Space used to be something that only maybe elite children would know about, but now because of the closeness of our um, connections, we, we can talk about this. We had students from across the countries across the world speaking to each other about space policy. Kids are smart. They're really smart. And I have a lot of faith that they're going to figure this out. What's nice about it is looking at things from a different, different perspective. Knowledge is something that um, there's a large body of knowledge and, and different ways that you can look at the same problem and come up with different um, solutions. But the, the problem and the solution all get bigger and better when you have more people working on it. I really think that it's going to take a consortium of really awesome, great-minded people who are going to come together and say, we're going to go to space, we're going to go as humanity, not as the U.S., not as China, not as India, but as one.
And I think if we can get to that place here on earth, create that consortium of great minds that go, okay, this is this portion of it will be borderless. You have the right to say X, you may land here. Uh, I think it's gonna take some work, um, humans. We have a long way to go. However, I think it starts now and we begin that conversation. And as we plan, we are making way for generations to come to go to space in peace and borderless to boot. Let's not make it something that is a problem. Let's make it an opportunity that we thrive on and we use our imagination and we capture all the interests of these bright students all over the world in ways that we never have because that's what space does. It makes you dream the possibilities in ways that many people never have a chance to. Yeah, I really believe in this. It's like a magic. So we can discover all the things in space. Going to space can't be considered the next pilgrimage where one group gets to lay claim to what they find. We need cooperative collaboration to ensure that it's one world within the universe and that all of us have the ability to cohesively live in an environment that we're proud to be a part of and that is sustainable for all the generations that are to come. Like you see today at ISDC, we are all like a family. You know, it's, you don't see that borders, you don't see that differences. Just like we have seen in the debate now, the students from different countries are actually part of a team. The only way that we get to space is we go together, all together. It's not just science fiction anymore. This is our new reality. So, I'm gonna go to the ISDC next year and I'm gonna ask the same question I did this year. How do I buy chocolate in space? <laughs>